Hey guys, Crypto Dad here again, and today I'm going to go over some of the new features in Ledger Live, including native SegWit support and experimental ERC20 support. So let's get moving. All right, so I'm looking at the release notes uh, for uh, one of the latest versions. There's actually a newer version now. 1.12.0 uh, but 1.11.0 was where uh, the native SegWit support first debuted and then they also have some experimental support for ERC20. So uh, let me show you the native SegWit support first. So basically what you need to do if you would like to store your Bitcoin on a native SegWit support address is create a new account and then you'll move your Bitcoin into that account and this will improve speed and uh, lower fees. So that's a great thing. So we'll just run over here to accounts and you'll notice that I already have a Bitcoin account in here. So what I want to do is create a new account and move my Bitcoin into it. So I'm going to hit add account and I'm going to choose Bitcoin. We'll hit continue there and we need to have the device attached. So I'm using the Ledger Nano X, all right? And when we're using Ledger Live Desktop, we need to connect the device to the computer. The Bluetooth does not support using the desktop version of Ledger Live. So I'll connect the device, all right? And then I'll enter my PIN. All right, and so what we need is uh, for the device to be at its home screen so here we are and then you can see Bitcoin is the first one there and the word Bitcoin is the, down at the bottom and the Bitcoin app is highlighted. So I'm just going to hit both buttons to take me into the Bitcoin app. All right. And then it says application ready, which means that the device is in the Bitcoin app and ready to go. All right. And when we go back to the screen, you can see that uh, the device is connected, has been checked, and the Open Bitcoin app on your device is also checked. So uh, the software is ready to go. I'll hit continue. And it's going to scan this device for any existing Bitcoin wallets that have been created on the device. Now you'll see there that the one that uh, is already in Ledger Live is uh, detected and found and it's dimmed out. We don't need to add it again. It's already on there. And it found a couple. I've been doing some experimentation. So you can see there are uh, a couple of empty native SegWit accounts that uh, I've been experimenting with. But this is the one that's the most important. The new one that it wants to add that says native SegWit. You'll notice that it also will present you with an empty SegWit account if uh, that's your intention. So it gives you both options. So we're going to go ahead and add this native SegWit account and you'll see that this field is editable right so I'm just gonna take this number three off I'll just erase that and I'll go ahead and leave the native SegWit you may not want that on there you could call it new Bitcoin or whatever you want to call this is fine so now that I've decided I want it I'm gonna deselect these two I don't need those uh, you probably won't see those and I'm gonna just tick the box off here and once I've ticked the box off and hit add account, it's going to add that new native SegWit account to my Ledger Live. It's also created the wallet on the device, right? Private key and a public key. So we'll hit close. And there we go. I've got an empty native SegWit Bitcoin account. And I want to put some Bitcoin in there. So I'm going to click receive. And I'm already connected and I'm already in the Bitcoin app. So uh, I'll hit continue. And then it wants me to verify the address on the device. So I'm gonna hit continue again. And then uh, just check your device. You'll see that it uh, presents you with a Bitcoin address on the device. What it wants you to do is look at this address and match it to the one that's on the screen. Once you're satisfied, you'll just hit this button because you can see that tiny little arrow is pointing at this button. So I'll just advance to the next screen where it says approve and then I'll hit both buttons all right and then it says application is ready again and it presents you with the X right you can close this but I'm gonna go ahead and hit copy so I have the address 
you'll notice that this address starts with a BC1. That's the new address format. So I'll close this box. Now I'm going to go over to my other account and move some Bitcoin in there. So I'll uh, open up the Bitcoin account and I'm going to do a send and I'm going to paste in that address. Right now I'm not going to send the max amount. I'm just going to try it out. So I'll do 0 0.005 Bitcoin, about 50 bucks worth of Bitcoin. All right, and then I'll hit continue. I always recommend sending a small amount first when you're just experimenting with something new. Don't send your entire life savings until you know it's going to work right. So we'll hit continue there. And it wants me to unlock the device. And basically what it's asking me to do is uh, verify that I'm uh, ready to send this, right? That's the security of the device. So if we look at the device, it wants us to review that transaction. And then there's that little arrow over there. And then that means it wants me to hit this button. So I'm gonna hit the button. It's uh, giving me the amount that I wanna send. We'll hit the button again. It's showing me the address that I wanna send it to. I'll hit the button again. Uh, it tells me there's fees that are going to be uh, associated with this. I'll hit the button again. And then it gives me the accept screen where I can hit both buttons to accept. All right. Now there's another transaction it wants me to review. I'll hit that little, see the little arrow there? I'll hit that. All right. And it's telling me the fees that it's calculated for this transaction. I'll go ahead and accept that. Uh, by moving to the next screen and then there's the accept and send so I'll hit both buttons and then it's ready to go all right and so now we'll just go over to that new account and you can see that the Bitcoin has already arrived uh, we spent a little bit on the transaction or I did just to show you guys you will spend a little bit of your Bitcoin when you uh, make this uh, transition when you move this Bitcoin that's how the Bitcoin network operates there's always going to be a small network fee that rewards miners on the network. All right. Now, but the point of this is that once we are storing our Bitcoin in this new native SegWit address format, we're going to have lower fees and faster transaction times. So uh, now that I'm satisfied that uh, the address got created properly and I was able to move some Bitcoin in properly, I'm just going to go back to uh, the old Bitcoin account and move everything over. And I'll demonstrate that new uh, send all feature. So we'll go back to accounts. We'll go back over here to the older Bitcoin account. And then I'm gonna do another send. And I'll paste in that same address that I just used. And this time I'll hit that max, right? So it's going to calculate exactly how much Bitcoin to send and automatically subtract the fees so that the wallet will be empty. So I'll hit continue. All right, I'm already in the Bitcoin app, so uh, it's ready for me to continue to the next screen. And then it just wants me to confirm the transaction. So let's take a look here on the device. We're presented with the review transaction screen again. The little arrow is indicating that I should move to the next screen. And there's the amount. And I'll hit the button again, and there's the address I'm sending to. And there are the calculated fees right there, and then accept and send. We'll hit both buttons. All right, and that time it just uh, sent the whole thing for us. All right, and then uh, on the uh, computer screen, it shows that the transaction has sent. I can close that. And just keep an eye here on this uh, Bitcoin, and it should go to zero because we just sent the entire balance, right? So there it is, all, all the way to zero. Let's go over to accounts, and then uh, let's look at our new native SegWit Bitcoin address, and you can see there that the entire amount is now on the new address created with the new address format. And then I can go over to accounts, and now that this is empty, it's empty, but there's still a transaction history, so it'll always kind of be on the device, but I don't need to see it anymore. I'm just going to hit this little wrench icon. I'll hit delete and confirm. Now you can keep it around if you want to. It may not be a bad idea. 
if you want to keep it around. It's a new address format, so not all cryptocurrency exchanges will support this address format. So you might want to keep that old account on your uh, list of accounts if you need to send some Bitcoin to it from an exchange that doesn't support the new native SegWit format and as kind of a, a transition address. You put some in there and then you can manually move it yourself uh, from there to the new address. And that's it. That's all we needed to do to uh, take advantage of the new Bitcoin address format. All right, so let's try uh, the Ethereum. Now, uh, we'll go back over here in order to test out the new experimental ERC-20 token. This is for advanced users, but we've long needed ERC-20 support in Ledger Live, right? It's going to make it so much easier to manage our ERC-20 token. All right, so we're going to need to do three things. We're going to, there's some settings that need to be enabled in the experimental features, experimental nodes and experimental core. And then uh, we're going to need to add our Ethereum accounts again to update them with the new ERC-20 functionality, right? So I'm going to delete the account and then I'll re-add it once I've uh, enabled the new features. All right, so let's go back over here. And I'm going to go up here to the settings icon. And I'm going to go over to experimental features. Right. You'll see there are the new uh, experimental nodes. Uh, we'll go ahead and uh, enable experimental nodes and experimental core. Then I'm going to go over to, back to accounts. I'm going to delete this Ethereum account, the, the old one. I'll hit this little wrench icon and choose delete. This does not remove the wallet from the device at all. It just takes the account out of Ledger Live. So. Like it says, accounts can always be re-added. We need to do this to, so that we can take advantage of the new experimental features. So I'm gonna choose add account, and I'll go to Ethereum, and I'll hit continue. Now, I need to be in the Ethereum app on the device, so I'll just go over to my device. All right, I am I was in the Bitcoin app, so I'm gonna hit the button there until I get all the way over to quit app, right? That's how you quit the Bitcoin app. Now I'm back at the home screen. I'm going to advance over to Ethereum and hit both buttons. All right. It says application is ready. And as you can see on the screen, it uh, has indicated that I've performed all the tasks necessary on the device. I'll hit continue. And then it's going to synchronize and, uh, find that Ethereum wallet that is already on the device. Right. Ah, looks like I've hit something here. All right. Um, so let's hit add account. I'm going to change this over to just Ethereum. You can call it whatever you want, whatever works best for you. Uh, there's one already on there, of course, the one we deleted. Let's hit add account. And there, it's done. Well, check it out. We've got a bunch of ERC-20 tokens now <laughs> that have been added to our uh, account list uh, along with everything else. Um, that's nice. Uh, we can see them and they're blue. Uh, they're designated as tokens. Um, let's see if we can sort them. Uh, not really. I mean, it would be kind of nice that they were kind of in their own subgroup uh, as opposed to just sort of being at the top level of the account interface and it is reading them correctly uh, the the balances are reading correctly and uh, you know the current market value <laughs> um, so that's nice but let's check the portfolio which uh, is a little bit uh, better of an interface to see uh, a little more organized, right? You can see that the, uh, the BAT token is here at the top. Uh, it's worth the most. And uh, the Bitcoin is number two, Litecoin. And then uh, they give you the percentage of your portfolio. And then let's uh, make this bigger. Let's hit show all. And so uh, it even goes down to these here. 
that, uh, you know, these down here at the bottom were basically uh, like airdrops. I didn't even ask for them. Uh, so I can get rid of these if I want to. So let's do a little management. Uh, they may be worth something someday. Um, as you can see, they have no value here. Uh, in this part is where the value shows. So they, they have no U.S. dollar value. This is the first one. Uh, so it looks like, oh yeah, they're sorted by lowest balance. So we can take to highest balance like that. Uh, if we want to sort them that way, that might make a little more sense. And then we can drop these that are down at the end here. Right, so I'll just click on it and hit the... Hmm. It looks like because they're sort of uh, tied to the Ethereum account, they won't go away uh, unless the Ethereum account is removed completely. So it doesn't look like I have fine control over the ERC-20 tokens. Now they do have this, uh, this little link here that'll show me the contract, which is kind of cool. And it is an experimental feature, so maybe it will improve. It would be nice if I didn't have to uh, see the ones that have really no value at all, right? And then I do have this little interface here uh, that will show me uh, it's sort of like a hierarchy here. So it's under accounts, it's in Ethereum, and then uh, it shows all the ERC-20 tokens uh, sorted from there. So it's not bad. Let's go back to accounts. That's the big one. Let's go to the Ethereum. Like that. Okay, so when you're in the Ethereum account, you get kind of a better ranking uh, or a more organized interface for all your ERC-20 tokens. You can see them down below here. So, but it would be nice. Let me check this gear icon. It doesn't allow me to uh, give me the fine control of hiding the ones that really have no value. It would be nice. Well, it's nice. I mean, it's nice that I can see all of my ERC-20 tokens and, uh, you know, and when I'm sorting them low to high, I can kind of look at the ones that matter most to me and kind of ignore the ones down here at the bottom. And then when I'm in the Ethereum account, uh, I get a nice interface where I can see the value of the Ethereum and then see the tokens below. So uh, that's a big deal, you know, because a lot of people ask me, why can't they see their ERC-20 tokens in uh Ledger Live, and now you can. So uh, that's pretty cool. So uh, I'll give that one a thumbs up. I'd like to see a little more fine control over which ones show. But other than that, I'm pretty happy. Okay, so I'll have to mention that it did take me several tries to get the new Ethereum account to sync up uh, with the new experimental features. Uh, appeared to be uh, a server issue on the ledger side of it had nothing to do with my computer uh, but uh, My advice to you if you can't get the account to sync and you get that API uh, HTTP 500 error or 501 error or whatever HTTP HTTP error you get uh, just keep trying uh, maybe try at different times during the day uh, you know, off-peak times and that sort of thing. Uh, try a nice reboot, uh, maybe a different cable if you've got several cables around, uh, disconnect, reconnect, uh, but it is definitely a little difficult to get this thing to sync up. And, you know, my reminder to you is that it's just an experimental feature, so uh, it's not ready for prime time yet. But uh, I like the interface, it's really cool. Uh, it's a long time coming to be able to see our ERC-20 tokens in the Ledger Live interface. So if you have any questions about anything that I did, throw them up in the comments and I'll see if I can get them answered. Don't forget I have a live stream every Friday night, 6 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. Please join me for the live Q&A in LA. Throw out any questions that you may have and I'll do my best to get them answered on the fly. Hope to see you there. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, I would appreciate it. When you subscribe, there's a little bell you can click that will allow you to be alerted whenever I post new content. Once again, thanks for joining me and hope to see you again soon.